Okay, guys, I think we're we're live. Um, welcome everyone who's watching. This is uh, the first episode of CS Presents. Good morning from LA, Los Angeles, California. I'm here with Larry Scher and Jay Holbin. Uh, my name is Greg Smokler. I'm from Creative Solutions, which is a small group of companies that makes tools for filmmaking and content creation. Um, we're basically small HD, Teradek, and wooden camera. And um, this is just a conversation for people in the community to hear some really cool stories and hopefully about this, uh, this really amazing tool that Mr. Sher has kind of built for his own use and now is sharing with, uh, with the rest of us. Um, everyone, it, you know, these guys don't really require an introduction. Larry Scher, cinematographer of, of, of many amazing films, and Jay Holbin, filmmaker, writer, journalist, uh, maybe even a gaffer at one point in his life. Um, but anyway, I'll let you guys take it away. Um, thanks for everyone who's, who's tuned in. Fantastic. Thanks for everybody for uh, joining and coming in and being part of this. And Larry, thanks for being part of this and, uh, and joining to talk about Shot Deck. So let's, let's dive in and, and first of all, tell us what is Shot Deck? Well, Shot Deck was sort of born first and foremost, just out of necessity. Uh, for, for as long as I can remember, part of my preparation for trying to first get a movie, so going into interview for a movie, all the way through the making of the movie, was conversations that always led to us looking for reference points for movies. So whether it was building a pitch deck and looking for like an image board that you could express your vision of how you think the movie should look, composition, lighting, inspirational shots, that was one need. But then even after you got the movie, there was a constant conversation of like, remember, you know, that scene from that movie or, you know, that shot or oh, what kind of silhouette are you talking about? And and so I would invariably just rent and buy DVDs sometimes just to pull one or two frames. So like, let's say I was making The Hangover and I was like, you know, I just want to look at Todd and I would talk about other, you know, Vegas movies, whether it was Ocean's Eleven, 13, Casino, even, you know, 21, What Happens in Vegas, you name it. And sometimes for the conversation of like what we don't want to do, but whatever it was, we needed these reference materials. And so I would, I would compile all these folders of, of disparate images and I just needed a way to catalog them. And I wanted them to be keyworded so densely that I could search for coffee shop if we were having a conversation about coffee shops. And so if you want, I can share my screen just because now you can start to just sort of see what it became, right? Can you see the screen okay? Yes? Jay, I lost Jay, at least on my thing. Oh, we see it. All right, good. Um, well, I, I lost the picture of Jay, but hey, I'm sure he'll come back. You guys see him or, or no? He's back in another format. That's all right then. But it's a anyway. really great frame of him. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So. The over, overarching concept was I wanted to create a industry tool for filmmakers of all kinds, right? So obviously directors, cinematographers, but production designers, designers, but also the commercial world, the, uh, the, the advertising, of course, world, uh, music videos, you know, you name it, as well as education, because again, we speak in a language of film and I've always thought as a cinematographer that sometimes the still image is a great way to communicate an idea and it's portable and we can share it with each other and it's in a form that we can do it. So, so I built this, this thing called shot deck with a couple other friends and uh, it's in beta now. It's pretty robust, even at 140,000, 1500 movies kind of like subset. But you know, it's 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 pretty self self explanatory. It's like you can search by movie, right? You can search also if you go to a specific letter, you can see like the title card of the movie. Also just jump into browse shots and search by most popular, or you can sort of search by other things, you know, how it's released and things like that. Um, and then within any image, 
we've just got this robust, I'm just gonna move my screen so you can see it, all this data points, right? From the camera to the lenses, to the composition, to the color, to of course, you know, you can look at Roger Deakins' work and you can sort of see, you know, 21 movies of his broken out into stills. But it's also a really cool way to also look for Roger Deakins. For instance, you can go Roger Deakins, Let's look at center frame shots by Roger Deakins, right? Medium shots with just one person, right? And now you can sort of see like how ubiquitous this kind of like framing, and a lot of it may be the Coens, but but just you can sort of categor category, you know, categor catalog it by that. You can then just look for silhouetted shots, right? You know, so let's look at uh Sorry, it's actually, sometimes even I forget all the little data points. <laughs> um, can you hear me again, Larry? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, great, I, I dropped out for a second there, I'm back. Yeah, but anyway, so so for me, the process of needing, so that was, that's what, that's how Shot Deck got born, right? It was just effectively a a massive image database that I hope one day has a billion stills and a million movies and and has so much information that you could be shooting a movie in Atlanta but need locations that look like New York. So you could just look for story location, New York, but shooting location, Atlanta, or Iraq, but I need to shoot in California. So let's look at all the other examples of movies that were shot there. You know, and then you can see, oh, El Centro subs in for Iraq all the time. I can see it in, um, you know, I can see it in War Dogs. I can see it in, um, you know, so story location, Iraq, you know, California, and then filming location, California. And then I can see images like that. So I can, you know, and this is, by the way, this was happening regardless but in a much less efficient way, but maybe a production designer is describing, no, this was El Centro and this is obviously a set extension, but that's the main street in El Centro. And so then when we went to go shoot War Dogs, we could, you know, we could mimic the same thing in El Centro as well, because some of that already existed, but we could get a feel for like, okay, what's the scope of what El Centro can provide? And El Centro can also provide, you know, uh, the desert like this. So, oh, that's a good Iraq sub, that's from War Dogs. Or it can even even provide the aerials from War Dogs, you know? So so it just gives us the same kind, kind of conversations that we're having, but put it all in one place so we can find it instantly. Because invariably, and, and when we when we uh, were making War Dogs, this, this was sort of in the early inception of Todd and I were talking about this site and, and what it would need. And I think at that point, I'd built like a really scaled version with like 5,000 images just as a proof of concept. Um, and even then we were like, ah, I wish this existed now so we could do it. And then it, it goes down to my own personal prep, which is I'll end up then bringing, you know, Romeo was the working title of Joker. And so I'll just <laughs> along here, just build deck after deck after deck that then becomes my kind of visual reference for the movie. And sometimes it's just my own personal finding the look, dreaming on the look, looking for things that just can inspire me and start to sort of form the look of each movie. And so every project from a music video to a commercial to movies, I end up building these kind of decks uh, to start my own internal sort of, you know, creative experience with, with look, finding the look of the movie. And you went through that before you, you um, at, at the ASC that you'll go through scene by scene and kind of pick inspirational images for each scene, right? Yeah, inspirational and sometimes just reference images. Like for instance, and again, this will be even better, obviously, the more and more stills it gets. But, you know, it could be like a Joker trying to find examples of like 80s, 70s scenes, right? So the best reference for this from Warriors in 1979, kind of the same time period, New York, not Gotham, but kind of obviously we're shooting Joker in New York. So this didn't serve as an example of what I wanted the subway scene to look like maybe color wise or, but it was a great example of graffiti. It was a great example of here, I'm gonna open just another tab. 
just so we can um I'll open up just Joker. So if we're talking specifically about Joker, um, let me just that way we can reference that, right? Because then you can sort of see it's not necessarily one to one. It's not like so you're not looking to mimic the shots. That's you're, right. It's just yeah. Yeah, and in fact, if you like cross referenced Joker, let's say with Taxi Driver, which obviously everyone always thinks was like the quintessential relationship movie to to Joker. There are some color variances, but it's not as close as you would think. But there are certainly, you know, um, you know, there's there there are some things like in terms of, but those things are more reflections of what my memory of New York was back in the '70s and '80s, and the way that like uncorrected light, you know, mixed with with film stocks, and the fact that it was like this, you know, this am amazing contrast of uncorrected cyan cool whites with with warm white yellow green fluorescence with sodium vapor with tungsten with daylight mm -hmm. right so it's like that's really the look of joker in large part which also just happens to be when they made taxi driver that's what they did right so that was what that film stock was mixing with um but but as far as like what how these things sort of like become the look of joker often they're just sort of a reference of maybe what we don't want the movie to look like, right? But they're still a, a very valuable reference that we would use to kind of get there. So in terms of like the subway, obviously, you know, our subway is, is fundamentally different looking than this subway, right? But the graffiti, the, the type of subway car that it is, you know, that became a big, a big so now it's a conversation often with the production designer or with props or with wardrobe you know about certain things and just about having this resource of uh of of stills to reference at your fingertips and then also you know there are ancillary benefits of it in terms of if you're just making a movie in the early stages you're obviously making a pitch book to sort of like sell the studio but you also may just find an engaging image and suddenly go, whoa, you know, I'm not gonna pick vertigo. It's amazing, I always find, this image always grabs my attention and you don't think, I don't think you think of movies from the 50s as having that vibrant, you know, obviously Technicolor and all that, but this feels like, um, you know, such a modern looking image, you know, when you really look at some movies from the, from those eras, they don't have this yeah. kind of modern aesthetic of that like really crisp, crisp silhouette, you know? Um, but you know, you could just like find an image that you don't and go, oh, what is this movie? Uh, you may not know we need to talk about Kevin and suddenly discover some brand new movie. Um, you know, and then, and then get really intrigued by this movie. If you have kids, this movie is the most horrifying movie ever. And it's brilliant. But, I know this movie. Uh, uh, it's, it's one of those movies that it's hard to recommend but it's such amazing filmmaking. Seamus McGarvey shot it and it's stunningly photographed and also composed and Lynn Ramsey, who, who is just a premier filmmaker. It, but it's one of those movies that you almost are, is like, why did I watch this? Because of the content, man. <laughs> but it's brilliant and it's gorgeous and it's, uh, it's stunning, a piece of art really. Um, but you know, so this frame may, make you then look for other images, you know, uh, you know, you can sort of suddenly just search because you're like, oh, I want to see, you know, so frame within frame, I just want to see more images that represent this photographic technique, which is something we see all the time, you know, in terms of just frame, frame size. So like, you know, I'll look at it just in more medium shots or Let's talk a little bit about the uh, all of this metadata tags that you have in here, how that evolved, how you picked it, and what the heck happens if you decide to add a new one to the hundred thousand you have already. Add a new, a brand new like subset of information. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to do it. I, I every day I sort of figure out new things that I think would be like because there's obviously you know the way that it works is you go into this sort of it's very straightforward, right? We've got all this metadata here that we just like, it's some of it, like Dan in real life, I'll give you an example, right? You said, when we first started the site, I didn't include some of this information like a camera 
uh, setting. So there's some metadata that's missing that I'll just catch up to eventually. And this is one of my movies. So I know we shot this on, you know, Panavision lenses, right? So back then, you know, it was a platinum in terms of the camera and it was just primos, right? So I'll just put in primo primes and then, you know, primo zooms. And then I just could get the information up there, right? We used 11 and ones and all that. And then, uh, you know, we shot 5298, you know, so I'll put that in there, you know, and it's just a matter of that, but I, but we just expand it. It's, it's not, you know, there might be subsets, you know, you can, you know, and so, and then you save it. And, processing techniques. Yeah, well, sure, exactly. I mean, there's even talk of like, you know, let's say I'm looking at, uh, you know, of, of coordinating with, with, uh, with manufacturers or something, you know, where you could obviously see, just let me just clear out this, where obviously you could see, um, like, even, my feeling is I want this to become ultimately the landing place for like everything. Right. So without it getting cluttered, I still want the thing ultimately to be this kind of like image first database that is first and foremost about just using imagery to discover and find reference and to learn from. But by just doing little breakouts, we could do really deep dive stuff. Right. So let's say we were looking here at this shot here and I just said, oh, I want to see other images that have backings in them. Right is that potentially then we could go a breakout that says that's a Roscoe backing and then what the SKU number is, right? Or, and go even deeper, right? Like just, just I mean, like I, I, you know, we talked early on, Jay knows this, and obviously we were talking is like that you could then see the ASC article about Kick-Ass and then go right. to the Kick-Ass ASC article, right? So to me, I go like, it's like the encyclopedia of movies it, through images. So, because I think the images are like the best way for us to sort of go to that place in the movie that, Im you know, as opposed to just data points like IMDb would have or something like that. So my feeling is, is it would be more like sub things like see more and you would just be able to find it even deeper, but that you could, um, you know, you could just go super deep with information and just keep adding data to it in sort of the shadows of it so that you could, you could find everything you needed to. And obviously it has to be available information. You, you know the information for films that you've shot, but if you're pulling in Citizen Kane, uh, there's only so much information that we have about that. Right, and, and that's where, again, I always, I always say it's like, you know, perfect is the enemy of the good, right? It's the information can always be corrected and it can always be, I mean, I was literally having a conversation with Ari last night and they were saying, you know, it's technically Ari Master Primes, not Zeiss Master Primes. And I'm like, I didn't know that. And it's like, if you look at IMDb, it actually says Zeiss Master Ari Primes. Zeiss. No, it says Zeiss Master Primes, but it oh, should say Ari wrong. Master Primes. All right, so let's make Shot Deck then the paper a record that can, that can remedy that. But it's like, it has to start somewhere. And so for Citizen Kane, we may not have the deepest subset, but we'll have some. And eventually like, you know, so try to get it in there. It's like, I always get excited when I add a new movie to the site because I'm like, it's in there. It, it's in there. Like, it's okay. like, I can release it. And then it's like, if you add data, you're like, it's in there, you know? And so even like for a movie like mine, because again, I have the information at my disposal and I plan to do this with all of my movies because also before I start to forget, which is the main thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, I'll go to a shot like this and I'll add in the notes section, this was shot from Grip Tricks, camera car with small jib and then a Libra stabilized head. Only because Whoa. it's like, well, it's just more information, right? And it's right. like, if I have the information because I was the DP, the same thing with locations. like a location manager could jump into the movies they have and actually put addresses in, right? I put addresses in for Joker because I know where we shot, you know? So in here, I actually put the one, at 140 Market Street, right? So it's like you could go to 140 Market Street, whether through a GPS and see the exact spot where that, where that scene was shot. So it's like, the way I look at it is it has to start somewhere. And it's, it's, it's like, if you put a movie in and it has no tags, it's still valuable. If you put a movie in and it has 10 tags, still valuable. If you put a movie in and it's fully tagged, amazing, great. 
but at every stage, it still has value. And so uh, the main thing is just start somewhere and, and, and hopefully there's a tipping point in which it just keeps, keeps going and it just grows and grows and grows and becomes this like just absolutely both essential filmmaking tool, but also this, this like source of education and, and like record, like it becomes like this record book of movies that can sort of be, be accessed through the visual through, through like their parts, you know? And so yeah. that's like, uh, that's where I wanted to go. I always say, I want there to be a billion images before, uh, before like, you know, I die. I hate to say that, but let's say set a mark. Let's, let's not go there. Out. Let's say in 10 years, I want there to be a billion images on the site. And of course, TV, music videos, commercials would yeah. be great to break down. So you could look at BMW uh, on a windy road and see a thousand images of that. And then now this is not a, a wiki situation. Uh, you're, you're not allowing uh, an, any user to, to update this information yet, right? Not yet. And that's obviously as far as scaling it. And, the, you know, um, DPs are a great resource to add their own movies because they are going to not only pick representative we try to have like the subset of about 250 shots per movie um there's also you know a version where you could have almost every setup so you could see the editorial order of a scene but then i think what we would end up doing would be like breaking those into like see more because it, what we've discovered is let's say you have nine 900 shots in a movie it just even 500 shots which joker has is almost on the border of too many hmm. Now, some are just because you want, want to reference the smiling versus the frowning, you know, that kind of thing. And, and, and to some extent, I've talked to some people and they want to see every setup from, let's say, the social worker scene. So I might, as an experiment, show every setup. But I think we've discovered that sort of two, 250 range per movie is a nice, a nice amount uh, to like represent the movie, all the iconic shots, but also represent things that are just valuable to future people searching the site. So it, for me, it's like often a good wide shot of the location. So if we look for a diner, you know, and, and I'm just trying to have a conversation with, as a director, I might be having a conversation about a type of diner. Let's go find that location. So it's like an early stage location conversation, you know, like that diner from that movie. So, okay, let's find that movie. So he's better off. What, where is this? Okay, it's in Poughkeepsie. But that represents like what I really want the diner to feel like. You know, and these existed yeah. in Manhattan too. We scouted them. I, or no, we didn't scout them. We would often eat there for lunch while we were scouting Joker. But it's like, it, it's hard to sometimes describe that. And so a, an image is obviously the easiest way, right? It's like, you know, it's like they could sit by the windows, but it's like, has this like, you know, it looks nice as an exterior or, oh, I want a diner that has, you know, all kinds of neon, you know, whatever that is. Um, so, so, so it's like, when breaking down a movie, you kind of want to have all the sort of parts that might be valuable to people in the future. Who, but yeah, uh, it's who, like, no, who's breaking down the, the movies the now. Wiki. Yeah. So breaking down the movies now, besides uh, me every night in front of the TV to my wife's uh, complete displeasure um, <laughs> is, uh, is like, well, I have an internship at Arizona state university in which interns break down movies and get credit. I have a bunch of people that have reached out and said, I'm interested in breaking down shots. And those are amazing. So there's just a little bit of quality control and training. And then once they sort of get it off to the races, amazing, you know, um, big picture. Just, I'd like to, pay, I'd like you, to pay people to do it. You know, you were saying about, you know, if you want to just look for a diner shot or something, we had a question, I think a few of them about Joker. Is it, would it be okay to look through your- My like reference thing? Of course, let's do that. Reference? Yeah, of course. I mean, that's, that's a great one, right? So I would start from the get-go looking at, and let me just open here, let me do this because this will help us. Let me just open the second. Oh, Joker's already good. Joker's already still open in that tab, good. So, okay, so composition, right? It's a, it's going to be a, a, a plethora of ideas and shots, right? And not all get reflected in the final Joker, right? It's like this shot was an early shot that I pulled. And it was more this concept of, and it was often, let's say, B camera, 
in a more sort of like, let's say a camera was not for lack of a better word, we tried not to be too conservative in the movie, but like the more sort of conservative angle. But the B camera had opportunities maybe to seek out something that was just a little bit bonkers. If we only covered it from that angle, it might be a little bit like too much. But so, so this angle sort of stuck with me in my head. It's not like I ever referenced it probably again on the day, but because it's kind of floating in there, it ends up becoming a shot like this, which I'll show you um, like this. Not exactly the same, right? These aren't the same shots. Right. But, but it's like, it's part of me just sort of building an idea of things to look like. So maybe from Milk Harris Savitis, it might be like a headroomy thing, right? Of just trying to communicate to Todd, like, why don't we go with just some odd oddities that maybe we hadn't done before, but we're both interested in. And so that might reflect itself in a frame like, you know, yeah, even something like this, which is just a bit extra headroomy, right? So it's like, it's just building an idea so that I can start to dream on what the, uh, you know, what the look and feel of the movie is. So it's like, I'll have a lighting, I'll have a lighting, um, folder that I'll just build into, right? And so it may just be to start to just communicate with Todd, the production designer, about just, it. it's also a great opportunity to feel out your director if you're a cinematographer or to feel out your cinematographer if you're a director and vice versa, whatever it is, to just feel out their reaction. So like if you build a deck of images <laughs> And they're like, that is too fucking dark. <laughs> like you just start to feel <laughs> out, like it's easier than to try to describe it. It's like, just start to see what they get. You know, it's like, I always say, if you're like a young cinematographer, uh, one of the things like a, a site like this that, like, or anything, right? Not just this, but let's just say, is start to just build a folder of like lighting that you like or build a folder of composition that you like. And you'll actually start to discover your own aesthetic because you're gravitating towards certain things, right? And so like, okay, a shot like this, right? Single light, this bed, right? Very sort of stark and, and, and simple, right? That might ref that may have ended up in Joker like, um... ah, I screwed up. This is oh, you, you, you got out I of Joker. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, what happened? This is, should be the Joker tab. This is why, you know, I'm still very much a Luddite. Sorry, guys. I was like, I just had that to compare the two. So like a shot like that, which I'll have to go back to here. Let's go back and find that first so we can see it. Right. That was in lighting. Right. So, yeah. So let's say we're on this shot here. Right. This shot in Joker might be reflected in a shot like this when he wakes up before he looks at the TV, when he's like all alone in his house, his mom is at the hospital. Um, hold on, see, there's too many shots in Joker. Let me see if I find that. No, shot. there are not. Ha <laughs> ha uh, ha. Oh, this yeah, shot, yeah. Right, yeah. so this shot, right? So they're not the same. I didn't, certainly didn't bring up this shot on the day I was shooting this one but it's like, it's like the main thing I always say is it's just part of you sort of infecting your brain, for lack of a better word, during COVID, with like just ideas that you can start to formulate um, the look of the movie. And then often the other kind of decks, I'm not going to make that mistake twice, will be things that are often production design related or props related or anytime you need, you know, so the Murray Franklin show might be like a series of things so I can have a conversation, let's say with my gaffer about like, okay, we're going to see lights when we turn back from the stage, looking back at the audience, what should we do? But like something like this, the star filter, of course, we weren't going to do that, but it, you don't really see it in the movie, but we did do like a standalone Murray Franklin opening, like the opening credits, like, and now it's like you sort of see it in the movie, but you only see it in small TVs. But we did like the we did the star filter there because we were looking for references from like what would be the cheese ball thing they would do for the Murray Franklin opening, right? So it's just like a nice example of finding those reference points. Or like a like there's this stuff got kind of cut out of the movie, but we used to go inside the booth a little bit more. So it's like finding examples like that, or a shot like to help talk to to Todd about 
okay, let's really get behind them for certain things, you know, like, I'm trying to just see, you know, or even like, oh, a color that might be present in the backstage and that blue, yeah. right? There's no question, Magnolia and that blue of like the choice of color behind the stage influenced this, right? Now, we did, we did, it, we did it differently, but it was like it's a leaping off point. Sure. Right? Yeah. And it's inspiration. Yeah. It's the same yeah. way that we've been using lookbooks forever. That's right. And it's just like, well, they, they're extremely inefficient in the way that you try to sort of gather all that information. And, um, and stock footage is cool, but it's like usually antiseptic and a little bit like there's nothing like seeing a movie composed and lit and, and, and already in its sort of like form that we remember and we want it to look like, right? Like you just show like a naked stock footage shot of a, of a kitchen it's not necessarily making people excited it's like yeah. if it's like you know a, a kitchen that's lit by gordon willis it might be something different <laughs> um you know so, no, I, so I'll been... build, you know i'll build these for everything like this is like my wayne manor one which in my mind wayne manor i always wanted to be like this this being there mansion i just always like this i love being there it's like one of my favorite mm. movies you know, but like, it's like, even for location scouting to like set up, like what could the mansion feel like? Like this one from Foxcatcher is amazing. And, you know, there was like the driving out to, 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 to Wayne Manor, which we had a shot of, like that wow. might've influenced that. It's not in the movie, but, um, you know, comedy club, I'll give you a great example. This is one in which I was, it was one of the first images I pulled and I showed to Todd and I went, I'm telling you, we have to find this frame in uh in joker and this was one of those examples of really being influenced by a frame and just actually making some decisions about how to shoot it you know it's not it's it's ours is still slightly different but the, it, that's the germ of it right yeah yeah and this is like a shot from lenny i haven't actually even seen lenny right it's but it's bruce surtees the king of darkness right isn't that what they called him I think so. Clint Eastwood's DP for all those years. Um, I kind of thought that was Gordy's nickname, but yeah, oh maybe, maybe. maybe. There's something. There's, the uh, maybe he was the prince, and the other guy was the king. They both love darkness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think Bruce Surtees has that thing where it's like he says to Clint Eastwood, like, you know, and he's like, "How was it?" And he's like, yeah, "It's good, but you know, you're a little dark." And he's like, "Well, you know, they've seen me a lot in this movie. It's okay." Like I'm in the movie a lot. I could be dark in this shot. Um, but I do think like as a reference point for production design, this may then have an influence because it's like a, that concept that we shot, we shot Joker in, um, we shot it in, in danger fields, which is like in like the fifties in, in the upper East side. And uh, some of this stuff already existed, you know, like, we overbulbed these things and, and, but the lamps like this were there, right? Which was great. So that was a great leaping off point. But the only thing we really added, right? And it's like, you talk about like, what's already good in the location. A lot was already good, but the way they lit their actors on stage was just slightly different. And so all we did was just take a Leco and hide it in there so we could photograph it. Cause we knew we'd see the ceiling and it would have to be, it couldn't look like a movie light, even though, so we got like a black one and we sort of made sure that it, it, it looked like it could be in that space just to make it a single spotlight. So he was almost in like an interrogation it, where during this complete abject failure of a comedy routine, it was like he had nowhere to escape. All the light was on him, right? Like the singular focus only, like we didn't want to see the people. That's why they're like really underlit. It was just that he was like effectively in the crosshairs of a light um, in, a, in a really like, in a way that he that that was that would make it even more heartbreaking you know but in a way very influenced by this image from from lenny you know um so it's it's uh you know the asylum right this shot from the conformist right so it's a little bit of just um you know maybe the color palette a little bit or just you know a little of this sense you know, of just, again, not, it's not like I brought, you know, it's just, it's just a little bit of just like, there's got to find some inspiration from somewhere, right? 
you know, and then you can just look at this. This is a fun thing is I think it's, it, it's somewhat uh, obvious if, you, if, but, but not always necessarily, but you know, Arkham, the opening scene in the social workers and the social worker in general was supposed to mirror the final stuff. So you can, you can actually like put it in a deck and juxtapose the framing, the coverage, right? We tried to sort of basically repeat all the coverage in the last scene as it is in the first scene uh, and in the other social social worker scenes. So um, you guys want to do some questions? I feel like, or or Jay, you asked me stuff. I mean, that's that's sort of the essence of it. There's kind of a, um, it's one of those sites that, that I, even as somebody who obviously uses it, I still sometimes just get lost uh, just going through images. So. You can, there's a lot of ways in which you can find um, find utility in it, I hope. And, and, and we have a bunch of beta testers. You can sign up to be a beta tester if you're a filmmaker um, and, uh, or a student. And uh, you just go to, go to shotdeck.com. And, uh, and we have like a little vetting process just because it really is an industry tool. But, uh, but the... Uh, but I, but I think you'll find you'll find that it's it's useful in, in helping you tell your stories. I, I believe well, that. A beta true. tester. Someone actually was asking if someone if they could volunteer to do breakdown. Of yeah, just just yeah, reach out because I'm all we're always interested, right? So like info at shotdeck.com, and uh, just reach out and and we'll get back to you. And we'll start we'll start talking about it because. I was breaking down movies regardless of a site like this existed. And I know obviously people are doing that, you know, they're, they're doing that all over the place. And, 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 you know, if people are interested and they already have movies that, that, that they have access to that they can do. It's amazing because again, like I say, uh, I'm dying for it to scale and for it to get as big as I see it. And, and obviously, the bigger it gets, the more useful it is in, in, in all these ways. And the movie doesn't have enough foreign films. It doesn't have enough diversity. It doesn't have enough indie films. It's just, it's a starting place, right? So, so we recognize that there's a long way to go as far as uh, of, of what it can be, even at the scale it is now, which is actually, you can search for just about anything and, and find something. Like, the fun searches, frankly, are things like, you know, are actually like, you know, uh, like, like, uh, disappointed, you know, hopefully something will come up. If it doesn't, I'd be upset. Uh, but yeah, 256 shots of people looking disappointed. Uh, that's usually the look my wife gives me when I'm breaking down movies next to her on the couch. So I usually <laughs> find this and say, is this what you feel like? Is this how you feel right now? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, that's, that seems appropriate. I just build a deck to, to, to express myself. Um, anyway, uh, I love Silver Linings Playbook. Such a good movie. Uh, anyway, so yes, yes, that, that would be great if people are interested in that. Okay, okay. So, so my internet what? kind of uh, uh, is killing me here, but hopefully this is working now. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. It's cool, I get two of you. Two, I get a two camera setup. Can you give us that shot from Strange Love? Which one? Oh, oh the one that. Oh yeah. Oh, the one from the deck. No, no from Jay. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give him the reference exactly. Well, what's, oh, what's, is that my shot that? for a second? <laughs> That's the shot we there want we from you. That's oh, right. God, I don't I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. See if I can. I just do the rest of this the the, the interview like this. I think that works. There we go. I gotta so, find the right angle. I'll do this recreation. Tell me about this part of my little series. There's a lot of questions about um, like kind of technology questions. If you're sure interested in answering some of those, like um, first of all, everybody wants it on iOS. I think. You mean yeah. for mobile? Yeah. A hundred percent. We recognize that. Here, here's the thing. Because so much of deck building and so much of like is done on a laptop or a desktop, 
we have hundred percent built that way. We know we're completely aware of the fact that like it needs a, a mobile platform. I just, uh, I just need the money guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's all in due time and due time is soon. Trust me. But it's like, of course we recognize that. Yes. I've needed it in the field when I'm on a tech scout. So I get it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, um, I don't know what the other question was. Um, oh yeah, have you ever have you looked into or, or thought about using the these AI or machine learning technologies? I, try, I tried stuff? it. I tried it. Yeah, and and here's the thing: what I found out is they're not there in the way that that we tag things. So like our tags are often these like things that frankly a computer doesn't do well yet, right? So. Um, just look for a really sort of robustly tagged thing. You know, it, see if I can just blow this part up. Um, you know, think about the way that this shot is tagged, right? So, you know, bolt gun, cattle gun, that's pretty far away, right? That's there, but creepy, right? Like we haven't found an AI to recognize this as creepy. You know, they can definitely do color. And I think ultimately color it will be we will be done by a computer without question because frankly i'd rather a computer do color because then they could really analyze like 70 percent of the shot is red and 30 percent is cyan so you could search for shots that are at least 70 percent red and then get a better search result so there are certain things they can do but what but from really good ones right like we, we beta tested a couple as apis and they would do things like like boy girl desk this and it was like it's pretty like we're looking more for you know uh pull down curtains like you know or uh or or obviously emotional tags which was really hard for them to do and so what we discovered was the curation and the sort of handmade aspect of the tagging is still a really critical thing there's no question at some point for particularly to scale to a billion there's a bunch of things that can be put pushed off to like a computer and, and that'll that also come for sure. Um, but like, I don't think a computer could do waiting outside a door yet. Right. You know, there are six um, shots of waiting outside a door. The, I mean, when you're talking about all the tagging and then and adding cruise stuff and, and people are asking about IMDB, it really made me think about as a former crew member, how inadequate, well, for below the line or below the, the key level, how inadequate IMDB is for like looking at crew, you know, camera and electrical department as is a pretty lame uh, category. Yeah. But, but um, you know, I'm like, as a fan of Steadicam or even, you know, you know, once you get really into the industry, people, you know, follow gaffers and, of course, you know, uh, of course. Even maybe focus pullers, you know, like I, I always, you know, those of us that work in it, so you stay to the credits and you see, oh, I don't, you know, they were, they were amazing right. shot, amazing focus, whatever. Have you thought about yeah. adding, like, it would be cool to go and see what was, what films has Scott Sakamoto, you know, offered? Yeah, I think, I think, well, here's the thing, because there's like a, there's a 2.0 version, which is like, we already have it built into the site. Right. But it's like, it just involves a little bit more. It just involves a little bit more of like where we're going, but I'll show you an example of what the site's going to be able to do. It's not great for zoom, but like, for instance, we will eventually keyword every single one of these shots with all the motion tags that are involved as well. Right. So if, if we're doing a shot like this and, and I don't think it plays well in zoom from my understanding, right. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it's going to play a little funky, but you can at least show the, the functionality of it, which I think yeah, is pretty cool. So, yeah. yeah, so, okay, so I'll show you. So each one of these shots, you can play right now, currently, 20 seconds from the shot. Yeah, so maybe the, the, if there was a specific shot, you could add some additional credits to it. Right, so, so what I think ultimately, because again, some of it just has to do, and I think it's a little bit more like, like you see, we had to start somewhere. So we started with some of the, uh, uh, the below the line people that might have a direct correlation 
to the images. So whether it's editor, production designer, costume designer, right? But there's no question that makeup artists should be part of that. And, and then a, a, a visual effects supervisor, no doubt, right? So I think, and that, that's really easy to add because it's just like the data entry of getting it in there. But it would probably be like a C more because again, what you want ultimately is, is not to disrupt the sort of usability of, of just you know, being able to see most of the tags right here. And at some point you just run out of space, but I would love to have that because the whole idea would be then in, a, um, in, in the motion tags, which would be the, basically the, the clip version, we call it the clip finder version of shot deck, is you could search for Steadicam, Steadicam oneers, explosions, handheld fight scenes, dance scenes, uh, the meet cute from a romantic comedy, right? And just see all those meet cutes, right? So if you were writing a script. So the idea is to, again, take that exact same platform and just expand it to the, ver to the motion version of itself so that yes, you could see, I mean, I, I always say like, it's, it's a much better, frankly, resume tool for, for the people than it is than IMDb. Like IMDb became, became so ubiquitous that if I walked into to a meeting with a producer or director, they didn't have my like resume that was given by my agent. It was like an IMDb list. But to me, and even I have a website, of course, but like I always say like, if you brought up my name, right? And we've even added this thing where you could have like a landing place for each crew member that could have information, some information about them, that kind of stuff, right? Their Instagram, their website, their representation, all that stuff. But that the landing place for my work in a way shows more of the breadth of, of me as a cinematographer than my, um, but than my resume. And it's actually a lot more easy to, to access, right? So you could just pull up 14 movies and then just like do a deep dive into each one for the look and feel of the movie. So you're like, I didn't see Hangover 3, but let me look at what the lighting was like. And then, you know, and then start to see like, oh, he liked Cyan and Sodium Vapor even back then, long before Joker, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, so, so I always say it's like an amazing resume tool for, you know, for our, our artists as well that are below the line for sure. Um, cool. Uh, there was another question about when you're actually making a deck is and and interacting with you know your art director and your director or what whoever else is in that creative yes. team. Do you use shot deck itself just and and screen share do you send them a pdf yeah so that? if you go so if you go into let's say the romeo deck right which is um it's just clogging up probably that's like pre-production for joker yes and then i go to share you see all the people i shared with it so this is our production designer our director our uh uh ad uh the my gaffer Right, so it's like I'm sharing it with all of them, so that they can add stuff to the deck. They can take a note and say, "They can add stuff." Okay. I okay. like this shot. I hate this shot. You know, blah blah blah. Uh, you know that kind of thing. So, so that's a, that's like the essential aspect of like the the sharing quality of it is put things. You know, for now there will eventually be like a deck building program yeah, that'll that'll hopefully be you know the same as in design or keynote or something that will even be better because frankly I'm for a guy who built something like this I'm still terrible building the decks I pick the images great but the building of them I'd like to be better so we'd still like to beat that but um but the decks really for a long are like a great landing place to then share so you know the best thing about it is now you can actually like just to communicate through that. So if you build a deck that's just, you know, to show a, a specific prop or something and just throw it over to the production designer and the props department and say like this, you know, so that's how you share it. But the, but the other person has to be on shot deck as well currently. So as part, uh, just to follow up on, you said you, you're not great at building decks. Do you export these things? Right then, now I export them to keynote or to InDesign. Yes. Okay. Right. Just because, you know, there's a certain sort of like, you know, but again, listen, there's a, there's a bunch of things. There's every day there's things we're going to do to the site. Of course, it's, it's, it's a beta for a reason. It's also just, it's always changing and always getting better and all these things. But, 
besides something like the mobile platform, we, we of course plan to have an internal thing so you don't have to leave the site and you can just build it within there and then also bring in your other reference material into your own sort of like shot deck folder that wouldn't be necessarily part of that, but it could be like, because not everything that you build a deck with is from just movie images. Um, is built-in uh, functionality to export to Keynote or? No, just to export, you can just export the images. Just the image, to, yeah. To your desktop, yeah. But of course, it's easy to like build an API that can just sort of coordinate with those other, those other places. So again, all part of like the natural progression yeah, of, you, of, of ways to coordinate with these places. The idea of, of adding images into your deck in is, seems really critical because I'm sure, I mean, did you have, I know a lot of, you know, camera filmmakers or will look at art, you know, old masters or that's something right. That's right. photography wise or. Of course, of course. Is there anything uh, in here for that right now? No, no. And again, at some point you recognize that like, it can't start as all things. It has to start as one thing and build out because otherwise it's a mess, right? So that's why we started with movies. We'll expand it to TV, to commercials and music videos. And then I think after that, it would maybe expand to some of those other ports. But, but the truth is some of the, there's also other places that already have those. We were trying to fill the void that there really wasn't, right? And of course, there are other sites that have film grabs, of course, we recognize that. Uh, there are multitudes of them, but it was really a function of like making it have the utility that, that we needed as a filmmaker that what that didn't exist. It just, it just didn't exist in that, in that way. Since I've been playing with uh, shot tech, I don't know for what a year and a half now, maybe two years. Uh, I discovered, first of all, it's a great rabbit hole to get into to just <laughs> discover movies sure. that you haven't seen. But I yeah. also found I, I was building a deck for a film that I was pitching and I came across an actor I hadn't thought about. And that put me into a whole new thought process of, oh, wow, this is great for casting possibly. I know, I know. Yes. I've done the exact same thing. I was literally just doing a deck last week for something I'm trying to direct. And it was actually that part of it that I was so happy and surprised by because, you know, sometimes like... It's funny, we know actors and we'll have a little list of them, but sometimes you just need to be reminded, right? And like that, like that thing of like, oh, I love, like you said, uh, the actress from Magnolia, right? Like you just have to be reminded because it's so hard. We have so much data out there that you have to sort of find a way to discover it again, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that, uh, even discovering old films, right? Like if somebody didn't know we need to talk about Kevin, hopefully they go watch it because it is worth seeing. Just uh, hopefully you're single and don't have kids. Uh, but, uh, you know, that it's bad, like, huh? well, that's kind of like it is just it is. Know. It's like, have you ever seen? Uh, by the way, this was a real influence for me. Not so much for Todd, but Killing of a Sacred Deer. That that Yorgos, Yorgos, the guy who directed The Favorite. Yeah. That movie is one of those movies that there are people that just they can't stand the movie. I loved it. I just was mesmerized by it and the way it was like crafted and photographed and this bonkers weird sort of like that, that kind of framing and I just was really into it and uh, so I, I, I often will break down movies when I'm making a movie. So I broke this movie down and put it on shot deck while I was making, uh, while I was in prep on Joker. And sometimes it was like we did it, I would have to break down a movie to sort of have a conversation with Todd about what the movie wasn't, right? So like, we would say like, is there anything in network? And I've, I, there's nobody I love more than Owen Roisman. He's like my absolute like favorite DP. And, uh, and we were like, but is, it, is there something in there for that? And like, we went back and watched it. And we're like, amazing movie, but it's not really the photographic style that we're going for. So that's when you, you start to realize you're, you're sort of like the influences of those movies are really in the memory of what they are to you versus the reality of what they are. Right. And so then you end up crafting something that's uniquely your own, but it does have influence. Right. And sometimes it's just the influence of, of like, Oh, that's how it's film stocks red contrast. That's how 5293 looked in, you know, and, and so you can have something like I will bring shot deck into the DI. Right. Because sometimes, 
you just are looking for like a way to express, let's say you just are a, a way to express cyan, right? And you just, cyan is such a hard conversation, right? So it's like, is it this cyan or is it, you know, this cyan? And mm. so what better way than to literally have the reference that you can sit with as opposed to just trying to sort of like keep dancing around it, you know? So, so, um, we're getting yeah. a bunch of questions about um, yeah, do it. how to yeah. become uh, a bunch of questions about how to become a beta tester. So are just you still all, knowing people? Yeah, we are. We are. But like I said, there's a bit of a vetting process only because, like I said, it's really intended to be this industry tool. When industry is defined by, you know, it's not just like, you know, people like working at some like imaginary level. It's like it's it's. It's filmmakers that are, this is what they're doing, right? They're making stuff and they're trying to make stuff. And it's, um, and so, and so we ask people just to give us a little bit of information. We don't do that, anything with that information. It's purely just a small way for, for vetting and also just to, um, you know, just, just to sort of limit the base to the people that are going to be using it the most. So we also can learn the most about the site. But yeah, so you go, go on, if you go to Shot Deck, and just request to be a beta, then you, you know, hopefully you'll get a letter and it'll have a login and then you're off to the races. Do, do you, can you talk at all about um, working with a colorist, with your colorist, or even if you build LUTs off of this, uh, this system at all and for use on set? Uh, not so much, I mean, for Joker, let's say I built, I didn't use LUTs as much before Joker, Joker, I built one lot with Jill Bogdanovich from Company 3, who's been with me since Technicolor days and beyond. So she was instrumental and her, her father as well in helping me build a lot that really replicated 5293. So yes, there, there are still times when I'll send Jill something that represents contrast. Or it's like, you know, there's something that we know from film, right? And I shot some 30 movies on film, which is film always has, like there's no clean white in film. No, you can create it, right? You can create clean white by, by just taking the highlights and making them white, right? Um, but, but real film in its sort of purest sense, there's always some contamination in the highlights and the shadows of either cyan that we appropriate or like a little bit green yellow in the, in the shadows. So, so sometimes it's about taking an image right and just um helping to communicate what that inherent sort of film vibe is right or that kind of just little bit of cyan that's happening in this window so it's like yes we will sometimes or to just talk about contrast one of the interesting things that happened and it was always a bit of a struggle for me as we transitioned in the di and the di was such a huge part of like you know it was really hard to do hazeltine timing right if, if you guys don't <laughs> understand what it was like before <laughs> computers and everything was digitized and it was amazing because if you think about a movie like road to perdition right you real and and wally fister was the greatest i've ever seen the two like so you had this 50 point light scale right of just red green and blue right so rgb right whatever magenta cyan yellow whatever that was the secondaries but the rgb and those 50 points in combinations created millions of color options right but when you would actually do the physical timing, you'd sit in a screen and the, the shot would go by and you'd go add 10 points of cyan and then it would be gone. And, oh, add 20 points of magenta. And then a week, you know, two days later, they'd make a new print and you'd watch it again and you'd go add another, you know? So it was like, you didn't stop and start. Eventually they, they helped with that, but it was like this, you know, fairly archaic and really sort of simple and pure, um, but, but, but obviously we've come a long way, but the problem is then when you had all these tools, it was almost too much. And it was always a thing Jill and I would talk about is like, we lost sight of like what the actual inherent film contrast is, right? So you look at a movie, you know, and you start to really notice it, right? And these, and these movies obviously can have contrast, but you think about, and I love this movie to death, a movie like her. Now, obviously, they also went with this kind of like lifted blacks sort of vibe to it, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you look at a movie, you know, like Lion, which is also shot digitally by the great Greg Frazier, 
similarly, right? There's like just an inherent thing, right? And then you look at a movie like Vice, also Greg Frazier, right? But shot film. And it's just got this inherent contrast, right? So a lot of it is like, okay, when approaching like say Joker, we're gonna shoot digital for a multitude of reasons, but let's be reminded of that inherent contrast in color that would be there if we shot on film. And sometimes you lose sight of it. So sometimes I'll use it just to kind of remind us of what that contrast is. And, and we all need reminding, because I think even Todd and I would sometimes be afraid if it felt too dark or too contrasty or maybe too saturated. And then suddenly we made a 70 millimeter print and we saw all this color be put back from the chemical process. And Todd was like, it's beautiful. And it was like, right, remember there's so much more saturation and color rendition in film than there is in digital so you actually got to really push to put it back and sometimes we forget that you know um so it's like it's 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 certainly useful in that but the the best story ever the best wally fister story ever was i would always go into the lab at 6 a.m to watch my stuff come up at, from the bath to make sure because in film days you didn't know what you had until you had it and sometimes there was anxiety of like is it sharp is it dark is it this and that even if you're you know uh it does it look okay you know so you go in at 5 30 in the morning and they they string it up and you watch it in a, in a film projection booth at technicolor or wherever and uh invariably other dps and their work would be there too and i was making i think i don't know due date or something and uh inception dailies were playing when i walked in and they looked, they looked like final, like they got a single, like, and it was, by the way, it was like seven different locations and every shot looked like the final and the, in the, and Mike Zachariah, who was, who was that Technicolor was like, the best part is, is Wally has one printer light for the whole movie. And I literally was like, the guy's the best DP I've ever heard of. Cause one printer light, it's very technical, but like, that just means he basically hits this precise thing in camera for every single scene. And it was the best thing I've ever seen since I saw the road to perdition dailies that, that uh, Conrad Hall did I mean, in, in his yeah. final film. So, so, so anyway, that's a long answer. I got distracted by film stories. Anyway, sorry. What's another question? Just, I mean, it's just, there's so many possibilities. You've, I think we've seen the, I don't remember the name of it, but there's a couple I think it's like Instagram profiles that will show like movie palette. Oh, like, color palette. It's awesome. Like color palettes. Love it. You could have that just auto populate That's right. from like a folder or a film and like just look at it that way. Yeah. yeah. And again, color is definitely something a computer can do better than our taggers anyway. A hundred percent. Like that's the perfect use of AI. And that, that'll, that'll come hopefully sooner than later, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a multitude. I, like I say, I have big, big dreams for what this thing can be as just like, um, like I said, like an encyclopedia of movie images that, uh, that has, uh, yeah, just that again, I, it's that thing, that story I was saying about when a movie goes up, I like just feel so such a sense of joy that it now is there and can be sort of like the, the history can begin of that movie on the site. Yeah, I think that's amazing. I think what you have built here, Larry, is, is truly extraordinary. It's a wonderful tool. And thank you. I, I can't wait for this thing to be more widely available. Yeah, anyone know Jeff Bezos? Let me know. <laughs> I need money. Uh, I need to. <laughs> it's a ro big rock to push up the hill every single day. This quarantine has been great because it's given me some opportunity to jump back into it uh, in a much more concerted way. But uh, but it's, uh, it's been a real passion project, to say the least. So we're coming up, uh, we, we've actually passed the one hour point. I don't want to hold you too much longer. Um, but thank you, Larry, for being here. I, I appreciate it showing this uh, amazing tool that you have created. Um, it's, I am using it constantly and, and have learned so much from it. And every time I watch you use it, my mind explodes to a whole new aspect of Oh my God, I never thought about doing it for location. So I'm going to be on it a lot more. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Well, and I'll definitely take into account like the thing you were saying about 
continuing to add more multitudes of crew because I think it's a great thing, particularly when the motion aspect of it, because then you can really see like, you know, I think it's a, it's a great way to look at visual effects work and it's a great way to, like you say, look at steady cam work and, and, and have it all at your fingertips. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for, uh, for doing this. I think it was really fun. Uh, we had a lot of people watching and, um, you know, maybe we can follow up with some time with another one when, when you launch the app or something. Yeah, you got it. You got it. We can do it. Yeah, get, yeah, everyone gets, gets so hung up on the app. I know we live on our phones, but like you kind of want to see this a little bigger than two inches across your screen. But I get well, it. I get it. We, got, we got it. Maybe somebody out there wants to build it for us. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate right. it. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you to uh, Creative Solutions. Yeah, thanks Thanks to everyone. Sorry and, I couldn't talk to you all. Just for everybody, we're gonna have more of these uh, conversations coming up uh, every couple days, so stay tuned.